Perhaps the most talented athlete Hawaii has ever birthed, Thomas Kalakukui left a mark on the islands few have matched. His career began as a young man on the big island of Hawaii. When he was an underclassman at uh, Hilo High, he was a water boy. Classic story. He was a water boy, but he learned all of the plays. And uh, the, the time came when all of the quarterbacks were hurt. And they asked if anybody could play quarterback and knew the plays, and he knew them all. And uh, from, from there, uh, as we might say, history was made. After graduating from Hilo High in 1932, opportunity knocked at his door. He was only 19 years old, and when Babe Ruth decided to do a, an ex exhibition game, the call went out for the greatest baseball players in, in the islands. And as a 19-year-old, he was chosen to be one of those players. Soon after, Thomas was given a scholarship to the University of Hawaii, becoming the first of 14 children to attend college. It was here he made his mark as a star athlete, despite his rather unusual size. Uh, football was something that he was always interested in, but he was very, very small. Uh, at his uh, um, uh, most mature, he was 5 foot 5 and 145 pounds. So he was small by any standards. In 1935, Thomas became the first All-American football player from Hawaii. By the time he graduated, he had set a 103-yard kickoff return record that still stands today and earned 17 letters in five sports. He wasn't just a football player. He was a everything. You know, um, you know, for a guy that size to be captain of the football, baseball, basketball team, president, student body, you've got somebody who's way out of proportion to physical size. He became thereafter a coach, and after the Second World War, coached the University of Hawaii from 1946 to 1951. He was he who put the University of Hawaii in the NCAA, uh, and he thereafter also coached uh, senior league football and uh, high school football at Iolani. His dedication to sports never overshadowed his dedication to the young men he coached. I remember specifically a father brought a 13-year-old boy to him once who loved the game of football but who had never played it because at birth he had lost an arm. So his arm was missing above the elbow. And uh, my dad asked him whether he wanted to play football. The young man said he did want to. Uh, and so my dad took him on, my, on his team and uh, that boy became one of his best linemen. And later on uh, became a teacher, I think, at Farrington High School. He coached because he thought it was the greatest leadership experience that you could give to an athlete. Because he was making leaders, not just making athletes. In 1982, Thomas was named to UH's Circle of Honor and remains the only jersey number in the school's history to have ever been retired. His old pals always told me, more than once when I was growing up, you know, your dad's the nicest guy, and he's one of the most humblest men we have ever met. But you know when they blow the whistle, and, or they shoot off the gun, or whatever it is that starts the game, you better have your uniform on tight, and your chin strap buckled up because he's coming after you. Even with all the records, awards, and accolades, it was the character of himself, his children, and those who he would coach and mentor that was his greatest passion, his greatest legacy.